This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Forget the frustration of picking commerce platforms when you switch your business to Shopify, the global commerce platform that supercharges your selling wherever you sell. With Shopify, you'll harness the same intuitive features, trusted apps, and powerful analytics used by the world's leading brands. Sign up today for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash tech, all lowercase. That's shopify.com slash tech. Welcome to the AI Chat Podcast. Today on the podcast, we have the pleasure of being joined by John Hobbs, who is the founder of IP Solutions, which is a boutique intellectual property law firm based in Atlanta. He actually earned a PhD in neuroscience and physics from Indiana University, and he is a registered patent practitioner with the United States Patent and Trademark Office. He's also written um, AI implementation software patents for Fortune 500 companies, um, including, I think, like Verizon, Yahoo, Capital One, and a bunch of others. So super excited to have you on the show today, John. Welcome to AI Chat. Thanks for being on the podcast. I've been listening to all your stuff, and it's great. Just keep them coming. I love to hear it. Okay, so you are obviously an expert in a field that I am super, super fascinated in. What I'd love to kind of kick this off with is last month, as I'm sure you are well aware, um, the US PTO released new guidance on what is patentable um, when using AI to kind of help you create an invention. So I'm wondering if you could speak a little bit to that and what you're seeing going on based off of that. So what we have is AI evolved and its ability to publish new talent happens when an AI invents a new piece of software, for example. Is that patent eligible? Can you get a patent on that? Now, just to clarify for some of our listeners that maybe don't know, a patent gives you the right to sell, use, and manufacture the patented invention for 20 years. And those in rights are in, those rights are enforced by the federal government. So the patent is really a very powerful instrument. According to 35 U.S.C. 101, which is one of the federal laws that outlines patent law, it's a person must be named as an inventor. I'm not going to speak in. So it would seem that the answer to the question is very clear. It's no, that software invented by AI is not patent eligible. However, it is possible to patent a piece of software that AI assisted in inventing or person. So, as you mentioned, the USPTO just released this new guidance, I think it was February 13th. And the three key takeaways here from the USPTO are number one, the inventor in some significant manner to the conception or reduction to practice of the invention. Number two, the inventor must make a contribution to the claimed invention that is not insignificant in quality when that contribution has been measured against the mention of the full invention. And number three, the inventor must do more than merely explain to the real inventor some well-known concept or the current state in the art. So, I have to, does that make sense? Yeah, give me give me like a, an example of this uh, in in practice. Sure. So, um, I guess uh, a good a good a good example of this in practice would be say you are asked a piece of software to make or you asked an AI to make a piece of software that. You know, produce some image. Okay. If the AI did this, the AI created that code, and you tried to run the code, and there were some serious problems in the code. The code, the code didn't work. It produced right. kind of wacky results. Say, you know, it, it produced everything in purple colors. Well, maybe a significant contribution on the invisible would be he, he, he would her here or when. I have to go in and fix that code, make some serious contribution to that, to those repairs. Be packed. Free. Okay. But if the AI was able to completely, you know, spit out the software perfectly, then it would not be patent eligible. You can't just, but yeah, it's not plug and play. There's, yeah, there's no, there's no patent eligible subject matter there. Okay. 
So that makes a lot of sense. I think that's a really fascinating concept, especially as you kind of start to think how that um, bleeds into everything that people are working on. You know, it's like if the AI generates everything on its own, then it's, you know, not patent eligible. But if you're getting some sort of output and you're kind of working with it and, and perfecting it, well, you need my question is, and just out of curiosity, like right now I feel like um, we're seeing this play out be like essentially you know, a mid journey image isn't perfect. So you might want to go tweak it a little bit, right? It generates seven fingers. You want to go in Photoshop and like remove one or maybe, um, you know, I know my, my coders um, for AI box, we, we use ChatGPT for a lot of what we're working on, but at the same time, it's like, it'll generate a chunk of code that you got to go fix it and debug it and actually make it work. So there's this whole element to it. But my question is um, when this AI gets better, which inevitably it will, right? Soon these things will generate perfect. Is it, are we moving towards a place where you have to use like a worse version of AI just to, to, to tweak it a little bit and make it patent eligible? Or could you have it generate something perfect and then still change it significantly and try to patent it? I think that, that, um, that's more along the lines of kind of what, what I, we're seeing. And in the example, so the USPTO gains like explicit examples. Mm -hmm. One of the examples they give in the guidance was someone, uh, you know, inventor at used an AI to invent a new transaxle for an RC, a radio control car. Well, the transaxle is the transmix and mm -hmm. Well, the AI can spit out that whole transmix and it, it can do that. You know, it's not that knowledgeable. But the, you know, you know, outline further kind of explanations of how you could get a, a problem on that transmission or what what parts of that transmission you could get a patent. And basically, those plates came down the, the assembly and disassembly of the transmission. The engineer that to create a new transaxle, they came up with an idea of a disassembly that would take place by the removal of you know, it says that that's enough of a contribution. That's a, that's, that's a significant enough contribution for that transaction to be. Okay. So I'd say, you know, you, you're going to have, like, if you say you design transmissions, you're going to know everything about it. So this is all fascinating stuff for what is currently happening in the AI industry. What I would love to ask you about is, you know, what are some of the arguments for and against allowing non-persons AI, right? the right to a patent. Yeah, so you can imagine what might happen if an AI can receive a patent. So companies would automatically be heavily investing in AI systems that would generate inventions, right? And humans might not be involved in that process at all. This would discourage average everyday people from trying to invent something. So that's negative. So it, it would be a kind of an unfair advantage, you know. And also this the patent system would just be instantly flooded with patents, right? So the USPTO would know what to do with all the patents it was receiving. But then there would also be problems with who would be the responsible party in case litigation arises, right? Since there is no real human entity involved, uh, would it be the corporation that owned the AI or the assignment, who the rights of the assignment were to? It's it would be really complicated, right? Right now, you know, if if there's some litigation that arises, it's the person, right, that owns the patent or the corporation that owns the patent. That's who's going to get in the lawsuit. So, yeah, it's it would it's just unclear at this point in time. Okay, so fascinating. Something I would also love to ask you about is, you know, what are the Panu factors? This is something that was included in all of this, and yeah, I'd just love to hear uh, get a little insight on that. Right, right. So, SEO is part of what used to make the decision on whether AI assisted inventions are patent eligible are called the Panu factors. So, the, there's three. The first Panu factor is conception. So, each named inventor must contribute in some significant manner to the conception or the reduction to practice of the claimed invention. The second panu factor is the quality of contribution. So each named inventor must 
make a contribution to the claimed invention that is not insignificant in quality. So when that contribution is measured against the dimension of the full invention, so you can't just type in, you know, design a new transaxle for my radio control car, that's not going to work. So the third panu factor is the mere explanation of the state of the art or an inventor must do more than just merely explain well-known concepts and or the current state of the art. So it has to be a significant contribution on the part of the inventor. That's the, that's the key idea here. Okay. This is so fascinating. This is really interesting. Obviously, this is a field that is changing rapidly. Um, right. What advice would you give to, uh, you know, let's say companies currently looking at uh getting patents for things that, and they're, you know, they're integrating AI systems and working with this to help them create, what, what advice would you give someone? Wow. This, uh, I'll tell you, Jaden, this field is still in its infancy. Um, I think that companies have not even really, most of them, the bigger ones like Verizon, Yahoo, they've been doing this stuff for years. They've been working on AI implementation for years, but the smaller companies, smaller companies like design firms, you know, for mechanical engineering, they could be utilizing these tools for such a small entry level. You know, Chad GPT, you can build your own GPTs for twenty dollars a month. You know, it seems like it seems like a no brainer to me. My advice to these smaller companies, SMEs, I would I would be digging into Chat GPT right now and learning how I can take advantage of what's out there are amazing. Yeah, 100%. I completely agree with you there. Um, this is a fascinating topic. So much is changing in the field right now. So this is amazing. If people want to get in contact with you, find out more about what you're doing and maybe have you help them on something on, you know, something along the lines of this, what's the best way for them to do that? Sure. It's uh, www.ipsolution.online is my website. So just go there. You can book a free consultation and talk to me for half hour. We can figure it out. Amazing. John, thank you so much for coming on, sharing your insights. This has been Thanks, super Jay. enlightening, uh, phenomenal. Hope that you have an amazing rest of your day. To the listener, thank you so much for tuning into the podcast and uh, make sure to rate us wherever you get your podcasts. Appreciate it, Jade. Thanks.